The king is indifferent, but also we are mirroring the king. You're observing what's happening there, and you can't do anything about it. Fine arts illuminate our present and explicate our past. SCAD professors teach brilliant young creators every day. And in this series, we reveal the works that most inspire our experts. This is SCAD Class. Today we're looking at a painting considered almost career-endingly controversial upon its unveiling, Eugène Delacroix's The Death of Sardinapolis. Joining me is SCAD professor of art history, Rehab Bagnole. The way I got hooked with this painting, I was looking at um, how I was represented in Western art because of my background that I came from the Middle East. I was shocked. Wherever you look, there is violence, it's about nudity. But the more I looked at it, the more I researched it, the more I started to fall in love with it. Was there a real scene like this in Nineveh, do you think? We don't know. I mean, historically, we don't know. But according to the play by Byron, yes. The death of Sardanapalus was um, introduced as a play by Byron. Lacroix was a, an avid reader. And a fan of Myra. Yes. According to mythological stories, Sardinapolis ordered for all his concubines to be killed right after he lost the war. If you want to analyze it in general, mm -hmm. I mean, the main elements that you look at is composition, composition. of course. Mm -hmm. It's crowded. It's a lot of things happening yes. there. The vignette quality, it's almost like a focal point. It's something that is taking you inside. If you look at texture, all the impasto technique, thick paint, there is a fire at the very back. There is killing happening. So look at him. What king, when you are looking at all these people getting slaughtered in front of you, you are completely... Nonchalant. You don't care about it. You watch it with, without any emotion. The king is indifferent, but also we are mirroring the king. So if you go to the Louvre, your position right across also, you're observing what's happening there, and you, you can't do anything about it. Picasso, for example, he said art is a lie. When we look at art, we're not getting very affected by it. We still have wars, we still have, you know, not Transgressions no against humanity. So are we learning our lesson? Maybe not, because we look at art as art, not as a lesson to learn. But nobody wanted to buy this painting when he first created it. Because, you know, the scholars or the critics wrote about it, they didn't like it much. Why not? First, it's the violence that is there. And second, it, it looks like it's staged. It did not bring um, all the actions alive. It doesn't give you the feeling that something bad is happening. You've got a maelstrom and then somebody says, freeze. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so in that sense, um, people didn't like it much. But of course, if we look at Delacroix later, how he, was ev he evolved from this, he was able to prove himself eventually. But during when he painted this, no, uh, the reception was a little bit, you know. But at the same time, it's still at the Louvre. <laughs> and it's the beginning. That's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> So let me talk a little bit about Byron as yes. well. Yes. <laughs> because what about Byron? <laughs> what about Byron? <laughs> Byron was considered one of the aristocrats. Byron loved traveling. And everywhere he goes, there is another adventure. So this idea of romanticism, then Byron was one of the leaders. When Napoleon took his soldiers to invade Egypt, he opened a route for the French artists to start going 
to North Africa and the East in order to get inspired. So Delacroix was able eventually to go to Morocco. He was infatuated with the East based on what other travelers brought with them to France. So Delacroix painted Sardinapolis before he went to Morocco. Yes, ah. before. So he based it not only then on Byron's play, but also on what other travelers wrote based on their experience or their imagination. This trend about Orientalism inspired other artists. The Impressionists were quite enamored with Delacroix. Yes, you're absolutely right. The texture was very much um, inspirational. And lots of landscapes, too. Landscapes, still life. He has some paintings of flowers, for example. That will be great inspiration for Renoir. What do you think Delacroix's legacy is in uh, art today? Actually, there is a resurrection of Delacroix. Delacroix is having more shows now, more talk about him and what he was producing. And especially there is also a return to the interest in depicting something imaginary. The role of the teacher, you're bringing so many things to light that otherwise might not be known or recognized. For all of you watching, keep the conversation going in the comments, and I'll see you next time.